This is KCBD News Channel 11 at 5. U.S. stocks plunged more than 3% today to end the in the red for the year so far. The drop comes after Britain surprised markets by voting to leave the European Union. Good afternoon and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Gloria Delium. The United States is being directly affected today by Britain's decision to leave the European Union. The concerns range from your falling 401 case to economic stability and military alliances. And no one can say with certainty what's going to happen because the British and Europeans first have to negotiate their split and then renegotiate their future relationship. Brian Moore has a story from Washington. Brian. Hi, Gloria. The next step is described as a messy two-year divorce, and the United States doesn't have the luxury of choosing sides. <laughs> In the White House. And navigating that British-EU divide will be one of the first challenges facing the next president. In Washington, I'm Brian Moore, KCBD News Channel 11. Gloria, back to you. Okay, thanks so much, Brian. Today, British Prime Minister David Cameron announced that the negotiation with the European Union will have to begin under a new Prime Minister. Cameron, who had led the campaign to keep Britain in the EU, says he will resign by October when his Conservative Party holds its annual conference. A negotiation with the European Union will need to begin under a new Prime Minister. And I think it's right that this new Prime Minister takes the decision about when to trigger Article 50 and start the formal and legal process of leaving the EU. The decision launches a years-long process to renegotiate trade, business and polit political links between the United Kingdom and what will become a 27-nation bloc. It's an unprecedented divorce that could take decades to complete. The result from last night's vote has been a shock right from the start. The biggest concern after the world economy is how other countries will react. Some hope that Britain's decision to leave will force the EU to make some reforms and drive toward a closer political union. Now, just because the re re referendum passed doesn't mean that Britain will leave the EU right away. It is possible that British lawmakers could ignore the vote altogether. But the process to leave the union won't begin until Britain tells them that they want want to leave and that won't happen until 2018, but the EU could deny the request to leave. At this point, everything is a waiting game. Here at home, many are questioning how the drop on Wall Street could impact their savings. We spoke with Lubbock financial planner Mark Bass. He says that while the drop is unsettling, it's more of an emotional reaction rather than a financial one. He does not expect the drop to be a long term issue and says that it also has some benefits. People that have a 401k plan or some other retirement plan that they contribute to periodically, this is a wonderful thing because, I mean, would you rather buy something at full price or after it's dropped in value? Bass says that historically, major drops in the market like this are able to recover in about a month. Stay with us on air and online for continuing coverage on the impact of the UK's vote. We'll have the latest developments throughout the day on KCBD.com and on social media, and there'll be more coverage on NBC Nightly News. The KCBD investigative team has discovered new details in a story we broke yesterday on our KCBD mobile app. Fifteen detectives are being moved to patrol. The chief of police says patrol is carrying too many vacancies, but now multiple associations are looking into how those 15 detectives were chosen. Investigative reporter Shaley Sanders joins us now with the latest. Shaley. Gloria, right now there are several officers who are detectives, but in February of this year, the department created the new rank Detective Corporal, meaning anyone who wants to be a detective now has to be promoted to corporal. That promotion includes an exam. Chief of Police Greg Stevens says 31 sitting detectives did not take the corporal test. He chose 15 of those detectives to move over to patrol. We spoke with a few, a few associations who represent peace officers. They tell us the detectives thought they would be grandfathered in, which is why they didn't take the exam. Now, attorneys are getting involved. I'm going to have this full investigation coming up tonight at 6. Gloria. Okay, thanks so much, Shaley. Right now, Lubbock police are looking for the two people in connection with a double shooting in the depot district early this morning. Police responded to the shooting in the alley behind the firehouse club near 17th and Buddy Holly just after 2 o'clock this morning. EMS took the two victims to the hospital with moderate injuries. If you know anything about the shooting, police ask that you call Crime Line at 741-1000.
The Red Raider baseball team is back in Lubbock, and while the team didn't go as far as they'd hope in the College World Series, they can celebrate a great season and the highest finish in school history. KCBD News Channel 11 Sasha Wilson is live at the Chaparral Jet Center where fans welcome the team home this afternoon. Sasha. Gloria fans were so excited to welcome the Red Raiders back. They lined up along the way here. They were clapping, cheering, holding signs for the Red Raiders. Now we talked to Coach Tadlock and he says while it was a very hard loss for the team in Omaha, he is proud of their phenomenal season. They won a Big 12 title for the first time since 1997. They hosted a regional for the first time since 99 and won a game in Omaha for the first time in program history. So a lot of firsts this season. Our guys love our fans. We feel like we've got the best fans in the country, and, and uh, it's pretty obvious when they show up at the airport, that's for sure. It's, it's a neat deal for these guys. Coach Tadlock recently extended his contract with the Red Raiders to 2022, so they're looking forward to many more accomplishments with loyal red and black fans to support them. Now coming up at 6, we'll hear from right fielder Stephen Smith, who says it is the fans who keep them going. Gloria. Okay, thanks so much, Sasha. We'll see another warm and sunny weekend, but could we also see some showers? John joins us from the First Alert Forecast Center with more. John? Well, Gloria, it looks that way, but we have more heat to deal with tomorrow. Temperatures will be back in the low to mid 90s. By the time we roll into Sunday, temperatures will back off just a little Coming bit we'll be before the weekend is over for parts of the South Plains there. Gloria, it depends on which parts, and we'll look at that in a minute. Okay, thanks so much, John. Right now, at least four counties in West Virginia are under a state of emergency, and 20 people have died because of the state's flash flooding. Up to seven inches of rain fell across the region yesterday afternoon, causing rivers and creeks to overflow. The flooding cut off roads, stranded residents, and knocked out power to more than 400,000 people. Heavy rain forced rescuers to suspend the search for a child believed to have been swept away by floodwaters. Authorities there say they've never seen anything like this. It's really bad. It's, um, there's a, a raging river. And there's 500 gallon oil tanks and trash cans and gas cans and, uh, and, and tree trunks floating down the river where people's backyards are. So there's people, you can see people in the second story windows waiting to be evacuated. We checked with the National Weather Service in West Virginia. Forecasters say the Kanawha River is still rising because of the runoff. It is expected to crest three feet above flood level this afternoon. Fire officials in Kern County, California say investigators are looking for what started a wildfire that's threatening more than 1,000 homes. As of this morning, 80 homes and 20 other buildings have been destroyed by the Erskine fire. More than 19,000 acres have burned and the fire is 0% contained. Several thousand people have been forced to evacuate. Three firefighters who suffered minor smoke-related injuries have been transported to an area hospital. Penn State's former top lawyer says in a new deposition he advised the school's vice president in 2001 to notify a state agency of a complaint about J Jerry Sandusky showering with a boy at the school. Sandusky is the former assistant football coach now in prison on child sex abuse convictions. Attorney Wendell Courtney also says in the deposition that no one from Penn State ever asked him about the February 11, 2001 meeting with then Vice President Gary Schultz over the research he did that day on reporting suspected child abuse. Schultz now awaits trial on charges including failure to properly report suspected abuse by Sandusky. The CDC has confirmed the contaminated water supply from the Flint River in Michigan did affect the, the health of young children. Investigators looked at blood lead levels in children under six before, during, and after the Flint River was used for drinking water. The odds of a child having a dangerous lead level was nearly 50% higher when their water source came from the Flint River. Blood le lead levels returned to normal after the switch back to the Detroit water system. The CDC recommends all young children children living in Flint have their blood tested by le for lead by a doctor. 
President Obama has designated the country's first national monument to LGBT rights. Today, the president announced a new Stonewall National Monument will be the area around the Snowwall Inn in New York City. A police raid on the Stonewall Inn in 1969 made history when patrons fought back, launching a weeks-long protest and the modern LGBT movement. According to the White House, the monument would encompass Christopher Park, the Stonewall Inn, and the surrounding streets and sidewalks. Right now, rumors are swirling as who, who will share the ticket with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, and some say their lists are getting shorter every day. And some good news for President Obama could also give a boost to Hillary Clinton's presidential chances. Plus, the Senate has reached an agreement for GMO labeling, and the answer could be right in your pocket. And John will have your complete first look forecast, including more on our chance of rain this weekend. Donald Trump's list of potential vice presidential picks is no more than four names, according to his former campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski. Lewandowski was terminated from the Trump campaign earlier this week and is now a political commentator for CNN. He said the list is short but would not reveal the names. And these are the absolute very best, the, the, the people that everyone will know, their household names, their people that he has said will help him achieve his legislative agenda. Lewandowski says everyone on Trump's list has agreed to be part of the process to be considered. Meanwhile, in a new poll asking who would benefit Hillary Clinton the most as a vice presidential running mate, 39 percent of those polled said Bernie Sanders would draw mo more voters to Clinton in November. The poll also showed that 64 percent of liberals polled would more, like, more than likely vote for Clinton. President Obama's approval rating now stands at 52 percent, up one point since last month, according to a new CNN ORC poll. It's the third straight poll showing a majority approval for the president. Obama's approval rating for, the, for managing the economy also stands in a positive territory at 51 percent. His favorability rating has climbed to 53 percent. Obama's positive approval ratings could give a boost to Hillary Clinton in her bid for the presidency. Tomorrow is election day for the city of Lubbock. Three races are on the ballot for the runoff elections. Lubbock Municipal Court Judge and City Council Districts 1 and 2. If you want to learn more about those races as well as polling locations or even more about the candidates, just go to ksvd.com and click on the Decision 2016 section. The U.S. Senate has reached a bipartisan agreement that would require labeling of genetically modified foods. The proposed law would allow food companies to use a digital label or symbol accessed by smartphones. It's more lenient than Vermont's upcoming labeling law, which requires the words produced with genetic engineering on food packaging. The Agricultural Department would have two years to complete these labeling regulations.